is forbidden. So after we covered those 10 basic rules, I will give you guys some time to think about which rule you can break and which rule you cannot, okay? What I want you to learn is there are always something in business. Because if everyone running at the same speed, following the same rule, by following the same rule, there's going to be no winner. And that's why there's only 1% made it. And the 99% are stuck. All right, I'm going to count 1 to 10, and then we're going to talk about which rule we can break, okay? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, and 10. Just kidding. All right. So, rule that we can break. Number one, we cannot. Because it's just really strict and you are risking too much. If you get banned by Amazon, you cannot go back. And the has it's going to be hassle for you to asking your sister, friend, and family to, to help you. But it's doable. So if you already have your account suspended, what you can do is if your sister or your brother live in another state, you can ask them to help you register for the Amazon account. But you need to know that the information cannot link to your own information, okay? That's why we have to go out of state or somewhere else, as long as it's not your address and not the same information on your driver license. And make sure do not use your Wi-Fi. Usually I would tell them to go to Starbucks where they can use a public Wi-Fi and to register. And after you register, they incorporate the company. And then they could earn, they could become just like 1% owner of that company on paper outside of Amazon. On, And then they're going to use that LLC name, put it into Amazon. So with Amazon now, instead of having that person name, it's going to have an LLC in Amazon. They don't track who are, they do track, but you own 99%. The other owners still, your sister or your brother still have 1%. It's totally fine. Okay. It's not a big deal with Amazon, but they just don't want you to be on the account. It's like rule, but for you, there's always a way for you to figure things out, but do not violate it. Number two. Don't send Amazon buyer to other website to view and pay for products. This one, we can break this rule because if you, for in this technology world where data is gold, data is the new oil. That means if you have the customer data, the email, the phone number, even their home address, you can sell them a lot of things. You can send promotional email. You can messaging them about the upcoming product. Or you can even send mail to their house. Because one way or the other, when you have those customer data, and once you build a good brand, they continue to buy. And if you can control their data and their information, it's going to be perfect for you. So what we do is we create a website outside of Amazon. We incentivize the customer to visit our website after that and there's going to be time where after a certain period of time you kind of cut it off before amazon slap you on the head okay number three is don't include invite promotion pack and slip this one you can break it but make sure you use the power of words so a lot of people they are making it too obvious and it's not it's not too good but just say hey if you need anything you can send us emails and that's come to number four we also can break that as well so three and four because with amazon when they have a large amount of customer every single day they don't they care but don't make it too obvious just use the power of word where you can really steer the customer to visit your store because Otherwise, you would have to always be dependent on Amazon. Is that not the right goal? The goal when it comes to selling on Amazon is to use them, use their traffic, millions of people on Amazon to launch 
kickstart your brand. Because if you were to start outside of Amazon, let's say you start with Shopify. We have a seller that started on Shopify and then lost money because you have to learn to drive your own traffic. Meaning you have to learn how to bring customers to your store through Google ad, Facebook ad, and a ton of different ads. But with Amazon, every single day, millions of people go in there. All you need to do is just a good product and a good product offer. So that the customer would rather buy from you than buying from other people. And that's how you kickstart your brand. And once you have enough money, once you have enough profit that you made from your product, that's when you can use that budget to go outside, build your brand, hire an agency to do your marketing, to bring people to your website Visa Amazon to build diff- like additional income stream. It's really powerful with Amazon FBA is that you can have more than one income stream. Income stream. Most people don't know that. With your own brand, you can even go to eBay and open up your store with your products and then having Amazon to fulfill it for you. You can, go, you can even go to Etsy. You can go to Walmart and do the same thing. And you can even wholesale your product to a distributor and even put it in retail store. That's what you see with Apple. This product Apple across every single marketplace. And it's why? Because it's private label. If you do retail arbitrage, wholesale, wholesale arbitrage, you are depending on someone else to give you the product. And what if there's no sales? What if the... I would say the distributor or like the manufacturer uh, like cut off your contract. Now you have to go and find another product. You have to hop back on that hamster wheel. On the conference that I was in, a lot of wholesaler, a lot of retailer. They said now their profit margin at the scale is dropped out as low as 10% to 5%. And they always have to constantly have to reach out for new manufacturer or like brand to find product to sell to flip so now all they want to do is they want to flip the script they want to become a brand and build it to where now other people have to come to them so now they own the game they don't have to be depending on other people and they can leverage amazon to sell it 